So what happens during the G2 phase of interphase? So with interphase, we know that there are four, or three main parts rather. So there are three main parts, and those parts are G1, which stands for gap one, but think about it as growth, as growing one. So the first growing stage. Uh, you've got S, which stands for synthesis, or when DNA is made, DNA replication, and finally G2, which is the second phase of growing. Okay, so those are the three main parts of interphase. So let's have a look here. What happens during the G2 stage of interphase? So the homologous chromosomes pair. No, because homologous chromosomes pairing is actually during meiosis, which is completely separate from the other parts. B, the synthesis of proteins. Yeah, possibly, it could be. You could have the production of proteins, which is the, the growth which we're talking about in G2. So let's leave that for now. Homologous chromosomes separate. Once again, this is to do with meiosis, so we're going to ignore C. And D, replication of DNA. Well, we just talked about uh, the S phase of interphase, which is where DNA synthesis or DNA replication occurs. Therefore, that's not what happens in G2. This actually occurs in the S phase. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Question number two. What is the difference between a cell in the G1 phase and a cell in the G2 phase of the cell cycle? Casting our minds back to my little table that I drew over there before, let's think about this. A. A cell in the G2 phase would be smaller than a cell in the G1 phase. Well, a cell would initially, let's say this cell is normally like this, then after it goes to the G1 phase, then it grows a bit bigger. Then after the S phase, then it, the cell doesn't grow any bigger, but then the nucleus would because of the DNA synthesis that has occurred. But then in during G2, then this cell would grow even bigger again. So that's slightly bigger. Let's make it a little bit bigger, show, show me. So it becomes even bigger again. So you'd expect the G2 cell to be larger than a G1 cell. So in this case, this is wrong because it says it would be smaller. B, a cell in the G2 phase would have more mitochondria than a cell in the G1 phase. Well, this could be possible because you have the growth of the, um, you have the growth of the cell, but let's consider the other possibilities first. A cell in the G1 phase would have more DNA in its chromosomes than a cell in the G2 phase. This is wrong because during S, the S phase, which is between the G1 and G2, you have increasing DNA. So therefore, G2, G1 phase cells would have less DNA in its chromosomes. Let's look about D. DNA replication occurs in the G1 phase, but not in the G2 phase. Wrong again, because it's S, which, the S phase, which DNA replication occurs in. Therefore, the answer is B. Which events occur during the G1 phase and S phase of the cell cycle? Once again, more phases to do with interphase. S phase. What happens during the S phase? The DNA replicates. During the G1 phase, the cell grows. So this seems like it would be the likely answer. But let's look at why the other ones are wrong. During the G1 phase, does DNA replicate? No. No, it doesn't. During the G1 phase, does mitosis begin? No, because G1 is a part of the interphase. And interphase and mitosis are separate. Separate from mitosis. So therefore, it's not this one. How about this one over here? Does a cell divide during the G1 phase? No, it doesn't. So therefore, it's not C either. And it's D. Let's look at this last one. The graph below represents the amount of DNA during the cell cycle. Which part of the graph represents metaphase? So we've got this amount of DNA. Don't worry about this complicated uh, title over here. Essentially just talking about the amount of DNA. So when you have, the, you have about 2.5 units of DNA, 
starting off and then it goes up to about five so it's doubling so what does this represent so this represents when the dna increases and dna increases after it replicates and it replicates during the s phase the synthesis phase of interphase so this is the s phase so which part of the graph represents metaphase? So it can't be B. So it's not B. How about A? So it's not A either, because you'd expect the, uh, the, the amount of DNA to be double during metaphase, because remember that the cell has already divided its whole genomic, uh, genomic in genetic information. So therefore it's not A. Not B. How about C and D? So we have to remember that metaphase, what happens during metaphase? During metaphase, the chromosomes, they line up. This is my crappy image of chromosomes in a cell. They line up in the middle of the equator and they are pulled apart. So remember the spindle fibers on either side? Spindle fibers, they attach to the centromeres and then they pull the separate chromatids apart, the sister chromatids apart. So, the key thing to know about this is that during this part, which is metaphase, then you still only have one cell with twice the amount of DNA. You have, the, you have chromatid number one and chromatid number two. So you have two copies within the same cell. So therefore, it should be double the amount of a usual cell. The amount of DNA in this cell should be double the amount of a usual cell. So therefore it's not D, because this would be the normal amount. This would be the low amount. It would be the higher amount here. Therefore the answer is C. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.